the Turing machine and the store program computer and so on. But um, he also made fundamental con uh, contributions in all sorts of other areas. Uh, and probably the next most cited, uh, well, actually the most cited contribution he made is um, to um, biology, uh, 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 computational biology. And um, he, he had a paper in nine, 1952 mm -hmm. which um, uh, brought out some of the mathematics underlying uh, the emergence of uh, patterns in nature. And, and this was a kind of fa a fantastic um, contribution because uh, people hadn't really um, guessed that there would be, um, you know, uh, quite precise mathematics underlying things like, um, you know, the spots on cows' hides and uh, stripes on zebras and, and uh, all sorts of other kind of uh, patterns which people took for granted and never dreamt there was mathematics behind them. Now that, that paper is, uh, is hugely cited and is very important to um, developmental biology and, and has applications in medicine as well, you know, because um, um, you, know, you, you see, if you, if you go on the web and, and um, uh, uh, Google morphogenesis, you'll find uh, applications to um, uh, uh, development of scar tissue and things like that, which um, you know, also can be brought within uh, Turing's framework of um, morphogenesis. Um, and then the, um, I guess another celebrated area is um, uh, artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and he also has the claim to be um, the father of um, uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he called it mechanical intelligence which in, in mm -hmm. a sense is uh, you know, in some ways a better description. Mm -hmm. But uh, other people like Marvin Minsky and so on, I guess um, John, McCarthy. Uh, John McCarthy was the one who invented the, idea, the term artificial intelligence. Yeah. So other people came after Turing in, in the late 50s and so on and uh, created the field of artificial intelligence. But, but he was the first person who um, um, had this idea of trying to create a machine that could function at some, in some way at the level of the brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when he was building the, um, uh, his own version of the computer in the 1940s, uh, the, 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 ACE, uh, the ACE, um, he, um, he, he's quoted as saying to his colleagues, um, I'm building a brain. <laughs> and of course, it, incredibly ambitious, uh, but it was, it was kind of visionary, although you know, um, progress has been a lot slower than, uh, than Turing would have expected. <laughs> Some kind of missing ingredient, you know, something, something fundamental about um, um, the way the brain works, which the uh, Turing machine was missing, and, um, and so the, uh, the Turing test is uh, kind of very person-based. You know, the uh, the uh, the standard of judgment of whether a machine is is intelligent is um, its ability to uh, imitate a human being and to judge of whether the machine is acting as well as a, a human being can is um, uh, the, the judge is, it has to be a human being so, so you know you have you have, uh, you have um, various competitions now which are set up um, uh, as, as practical versions of the, um, uh, the Turing test and there's prizes and things but nobody ever wins the prizes because uh, Nobody's built a machine as intelligent as, as a, you know, good enough to fool anybody that is in, as intelligent as, um, as a human being. Mm -hmm. so. How would you describe the importance of Turing tests in the in the past or in the future of science technology? I don't know. You ask different people, and you'll get different answers. Mm -hmm. um, for some people, there's dissatisfaction with the Turing test because it's not precise enough. And um, the problem for them is that they've not been able that they've not been able to come up with an alternative. So there's no there's no there's no kind of mainstream or uh, agreed alternative to the Turing test. And people are, people have uh, twiddled with it. You know they've kind of uh, tried to modify it to make it more precise in some way. But you know it's, there's nothing that's really uh, satisfied the uh, community as a whole. Um, the Turing test. The Turing test is definitely a recognition that there's something, uh, there's something about intelligence which we, which we find hard to measure. I mean, back if you go back to like, you know, when I was uh, at school, 
uh, IQ tests were all the thing, and then gradually people recognised that actually there was more to intelligence than uh, uh, you know doing uh, puzzles, and um, so 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 there's been various kind of algorithmic um, ideas, you know, for, for testing intelligence, but uh, it's, it it always boils down to you know. If you're going to test intelligence, you need a human being to do it, and the standard of um, uh, the standard of um, excellence of the inter intelligence is how well it can do what a human being does. And, uh, so um, it's, it's very hard to get away from from the, the human brain. And, um, now, of course, if you're talking about actually developing artificial intelligence, well, the Turing test is just it helps you check whether you've succeeded, but um, but actually. Actual development of intelligence, I, I think, was left um, very much to people who came after Turing. He died, he died too early, and um, you know, major, major contributions to what you actually do to, to build an intelligent machine came uh, came rather later. But it, uh, you know, I mean, the progress has been painfully slow, and um, uh, there are different philosophies, there are disagreements amongst leading people about how you build an intelligent machine and whether you can even do it. And, um, so it's very much an open field still, and the sort of problems that Turing was thinking about are still, still very active issues nowadays. So, in other way, maybe I will, I would like to know this. Uh, do you agree that um, the Turing mas machine is the origin of the modern computers, or maybe what's the similarity? Oh yeah, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. That that um, okay. There's, um, uh, there's a tendency of mathematicians to say, ah, the computer is just a universal Turing machine. And, and this, of course, is very much resented by people who put a lot of work into the uh, actual building of machines, the, the, the engineers and so on that kind of uh, uh, built the kind of mechanisms for storing data and so on. And uh, I, th I think there's, there's a kind of, there's a need to get a balance between the, you know, the, um, uh, the, the non-recognition of the theory by the engineers and the non-recognition of the, um, the incredible problems to overcome in, in embodying the universal Turing machine that were overcome by people in the early days. So um, I, I think I think there's a there's a realization nowadays that in some ways comes out of um, the artificial intelligence and the emergence and the morphogenesis and so on that actually the embodiment of Computation is actually very important, and but there's no doubt that you know our laptop is is, is just basically a universal Turing machine. But uh, you know, in in uh, uh, in in, uh, in theory, you know, the, the the kind of uh, the logical structure of it is is that of the universal Turing machine.